The Detroit Lions have been very busy this offseason, adding a lot of different names at a lot of different positions, and they add three more. Geronimo Allison, wide receiver of the Green Bay Packers, cornerback Daryl Roberts of the New York Jets, another former Patriot name, and Reggie Ragland, linebacker of the Kansas City Chiefs. So this offseason, the Lions have been just about more active than almost any team in free agency. There hasn't been a lot of big time signings by the Lions, like big name signings, but there have been a lot of small signings, mid-tier signings, and I feel like most of them I've liked, some of them not so much, but I like the direction of where the Lions are going for the most part this offseason. You know, we knew that they were going to trade Darius Slay, so what did they do in the secondary, specifically at the corner position, to kind of make up for that loss? Because you're not really going to find a guy of Darius Slay's stature in free agency. Well, first, they sign Desmond Trufant of the Atlanta Falcons, who I kind of feel like is very similar to Slay in skill set, and I feel like for the price, was not a bad signing and could come in there and compete for the number one cornerback job even, and has shown at times throughout his career that he can be a pretty quality number one corner for the Atlanta Falcons. So I addressed that signing already. If you haven't checked that out, go check it out. But that's the first move they kind of made to solidify, I want to say, their secondary. But even then, they're not solidifying it because even in the draft, they could continue to address that position, as people know, high in the first round. Daryl Roberts is another depth corner that the Lions can add here to just add competition to not only their training camp, but potentially even to their roster game one, week one, and beyond. Daryl Roberts is a player that's played and started a little bit for the Jets here and there. He's primarily an outside corner. He's primarily a physical at the line press man corner. And I feel like that's kind of fits what the Lions like to do defensively. He, to me, kind of reminds me of how I believe the Patriots would have used Eric Rowe with Matt Patricia as their defensive coordinator. So they used Eric Rowe or corners of height like Daryl Roberts as kind of underneath press man corners for some of the taller receivers in the league. And then they would have like a safety hover over top. Like let's say for this case, Deron Harmon. So in the Super Bowl, Super Bowl 51, little Patricia insight here, they played Julio Jones and Eric Rowe covered Julio Jones for almost the entire game. So they had Eric Rowe cover Julio Jones and they had Devin McCourty cover him over the top, almost in a double team situation. So I feel like if Daryl Roberts is going to be on this team and he's going to play a role, the role would be that Eric Rowe role. He is a taller corner. He is a longer corner and he can press and he can be physical and he's shown promise in those areas of his game. And what it's all about in, in scouting and signing players across the NFL is finding things that they do well and allow them to do that. You know, you're not going to make Daryl Roberts cover Odell on the outside and say, hey, cover him on a go route because you're going to get burned. But if you have Roberts play maybe a little zone, maybe he plays man to man with a safety over top and you just let him be physical and let him press and let him use his long arms and get the guy off his route that he could be effective. And I, he's shown that he can be effective in certain times in his career. He's six feet, so he does have the height. And he's played, let's see, started 10 games in a row, two seasons in a row for the Jets. It's even, he's played a little bit of safety, a little bit of free safety at times. So he's shown a little bit of versatility. Um, not a big time playmaker in terms of interceptions. He only has three in his four-year career. He did start his career with New England, which is why I bring up the New England tie because he started his career in preseason. He played, he was drafted, I believe, by New England or was undrafted. Either way, he came into training camp and Patricia was there as the defensive coordinator. He actually didn't have a bad preseason from what I remember watching those games, but the secondary was loaded, so he didn't make the team. And he goes to the Jets and actually at times has some promise and, and fills in for some injured players and actually plays just as good, if not better, than some of those corners on the Jets because the Jets' corners have stunk it up for the most part over the years. But he's shown that he can tackle. He's shown that he's physical. He's shown that he can play downhill. And he also has shown that he's pretty smart. 
And I think all of those things fit what Patricia is looking for in a corner on their defense. Now, from an advanced stat perspective, 593 yards allowed in 2019. That's 54 completions on 84 targets, 64% completion, not bad. Um, 103.9 rating, which isn't ideal. And most of that's been because he allowed six touchdowns last year. Now, the question is how much of that was actually on him and how much was it on the another guy? You know, you always have to take these stats with a grain of salt. The season before 2018, he allowed four touchdowns, 13.2 uh, yards per completion, but he only allowed 59% completion, so 34 for 57. And this kind of lines up with what I see with my eyes from Daryl Roberts. He's very physical, and because he's very physical, which I've said numerous times already, he breaks up a lot of passes, and he makes plays on the ball, and he'll kind of uh, physically be imposing for a receiver to go against it in a route so it allows him to have a lot of incompletions but also when he's beat he's beat you know what I mean he gets burnt sometimes but when he's not burnt he's making a play so that's kind of my read on Daryl Roberts he's going to be a depth guy probably the number four corner for the Lions but I think he does suit a role of what Patricia's looking for a longer guy taller guy play press man and do all that stuff the second one I want to bring up is Geronimo Allison Geronimo Allison, you might know more from like fantasy football, who's been, I want to say like a depth number three type receiver, slot receiver for the Green Bay Packers. The rare thing about Allison is that he's six foot three and he's a slot receiver for the most part. He's played a majority of the snaps in the slot and he's had some success here and there. He's been with Aaron Rodgers, so he's been with a very good quarterback and I've never been a huge fan of him to be completely honest with you. He's never really shown me a ton, but what he is, is he's an NFL receiver. He's a number four. He's a number five. He's a depth guy that you can throw in there and you know, he's, he's played in the NFL. He's started games. He's been reliable. He can run routes. He's been in NFL offenses. He's played with a good quarterback. Matt Stafford can utilize a number four, number five receiver. Allison is not going to blow you out of the water with anything he does physically other than his height, um, which he kind of seems like he's smaller than 6'3", but he is 6'3", and that is something that the Lions might want to utilize in the slot in kind of counteracting what they have already in Danny Amendola, who's a shorter, quicker player. So sometimes when you give a defense a taller player like Allison, it's a little bit different. But I think basically what Allison is, is this year's version of what they wanted in Curse, who was supposed to be their number four, number three last year, is it's now going to be Allison, I believe. So this is kind of another very Patriot-like thing to take a receiver like this. A veteran guy who's played four or five seasons, has had relative success on a team, and is signed for like a camp body to see what he can do. And then eventually maybe he's like the number four receiver. And I think that's what he is. I don't think he's ever going to be a number two or a number one receiver in the NFL, but you can't sign, you know, I don't know who <laughs> you can't sign Randy Moss every day. You know what I mean? So Allison is going to be a, a depth player. Who's a good presence on the team as a depth guy. Don't expect anything more. That's all I'm going to say. One year, I think he made $1 million. I mean, good contract, basically the minimum and yeah, that's what you're that's mostly what you're getting here. But when when I'm looking at the depth chart, he's already in my mind the number 4 on your depth chart. So, that's not a bad signing in my opinion and replaces Curse. The other interesting signing is Reggie Raglan, who they signed from the Kansas City Chiefs. Raglan is 6 foot 2, 252. He's only 26 years old and I will, he will be 27 in September. He's a guy that I've gone back and forth with throughout his career on how I feel about him. He used to play early in his career, or sorry, he's always played with Kansas City, but I, I feel like early in his career, I saw promise from him and what I liked about him mostly and what I still like about him, about him really is his ability to stop the run and his ability to aggressively attack the run and he's a big hitter. Like he's a big bodied linebacker. So I, this is the thing about the signing. I don't necessarily know if the Lions need that type of linebacker. Maybe I'm wrong, but 
that's personally how I see it. Now, this is where I kind of connecting the dots here. I really feel like Patricia wanted to land in Roberts and maybe what he's getting here in Reggie Raglan is basically Alana Roberts because Reggie Raglan is a lot like Alana Roberts who played for the Patriots, now going to play for the Dolphins. Uh, both players are very good versus a run. Both are, Raglan is bigger than Roberts in terms of his height. I think Roberts is only like 5'11 or 6 foot, but they're both very stocky and they're both powerful players who big hitters can shed in the run game and make plays behind the line or an excellent in goal line defense. And I think Raglan has shown that he's progressed a little bit more as a cover guy, but I don't think you ever want to count on him in terms of that. Like this year, he only allowed a 73 rating in coverage as compared to last year, 101 rating, but he played a lot less this year. He did not play nearly enough snaps, which I feel like is a big reason why he left Kansas City and Kansas City did not re-sign him. Because I think Kansas City saw that he's not necessarily great in coverage. So they didn't play him a lot because they felt like he was susceptible to giving up plays in that regard. But when you need him to step up in a third and short or a goal line situation or a rundown, that's your guy. He's going he's gonna to make a play. So he's another chess piece. A lot like Daryl Roberts, he's a role player that, let's just say, for the sake of it, Jamie Collins, you take him off on third and one. And I don't know why you would do that, but let's just say Jamie Collins is out. Then you put in, or Gerard Davis, for the sake of it, okay? So you put in one guy, and you take the other guy out. With linebackers, you usually only play in two, maybe three. He's like your third guy you throw in there in base personnel because you think the team's going to run it, or you can put him on like the fullback, or you could put him on the slow tight end who's a blocking tight end, and you just tell him to get after the run and running back and make a tackle, make a play. That is your type of linebacker here in Reggie Ranglin. He's big for an inside linebacker, and that's what he'll be in this defense. And again, he's just more depth for this position. So when looking at the depth chart, I mean, they have Tabai, who I, I kind of like a little bit. Uh, Gerard Davis, they don't really know what they're going to do with him, whether he's kind of like a wild card edge player now, or if he's still a linebacker, or he's still very athletic. So we'll see what they do with him. Christian Jones is more of like a pass rushing type, and Jamie Collins is kind of like do it all type. But I, I think the one guy they are sort of missing here, unless Tavai is that guy, is the rundown guy that you add to your base personnel. And the Lions, they were not very good versus the run. So Raglan could add to that and could help in that regard. So that's kind of my thoughts on all three players. Not huge names, but all players that I know and I've seen play quite a bit. And I, I don't know. I don't necessarily love them, but I do feel like they all are depth pieces that I think can help an NFL roster. And they're all role players. That's why I find these signings kind of very intriguing is just trying to figure out what they're going to do for this team in the Lions. But I like that the Lions are continuing to add veteran depth players because that you always need. You always need competition at these spots. You always need more players that are capable of playing. And you always need depth, depth, depth because of injuries, injuries, injuries. And because you need to keep your great players fresh as well. And maybe this allows, like for Reggie Raglan, Jamie Collins to be a little bit more fresh. Or maybe for Daryl Roberts' sake, you add a different element to your cornerback group. Or for Geronimo Allison, maybe you add a little bit of a different type of receiver to your receiving group. Instead of Danny Amendola in the slot, you put Allison in the slot. All these things have to be taken into account. And that's kind of my thought on these three moves from the Detroit Lions.